I'm going to start recording. And as you know, by accepting the recording uh, under the state law, you're saying it's okay. If you feel uncomfortable, you can turn off your camera. Um, I'm only going to uh, be recording the screen. So let me share my screen and let me get my presentation up here. Okay, so we've already done that. Um, let me introduce myself again. I'm Susan Martin. I'm the program director for PhD Career Development. I'm part of the graduate school staff and I do have a graduate assistant. Her name is April Fuller and uh, you'll get to meet April if you attend any of the weekly workshops that happen on um, about career development topics. Um, our email addresses are here and you can reach out to us at any point. The work that I do is aligned with the Graduate Pathways pathway known as Manage Your Career. And by now, you should have already received at least one of the um, Grad Pathways newsletters from the graduate school and one, two, or three of my PhD career update emails. So there, as many of you know, there are four different career centers on campus. If you're in engineering you, or business or the School of Public Policy, you definitely want to check out the websites and learn who the staff members are so that you can schedule individual appointments with them. You should also check out their events calendar to see what kinds of things they're doing throughout the year. But as I mentioned, I'm here to serve all doctoral students, regardless of your discipline. And I'm part of the University Career Center and the President's Promise staff. So this is going to be a starting point. Some of you may know the things that I'm going to cover. For others, for others of you, it will be new information. Um, I'm also going to talk about being ready and how does all of this work in the US and along the way, I'm going to talk about tips and tools that you can use so that you can really maximize your doctoral training. And for those of you who know a lot, when we get to the Q&A, I really want you to chime in and share your experiences and answers. Okay, so career readiness is a term that I like to use with PhDs, and it means that along the way through your doctoral program, you've developed some specific and transferable skills and had some experiences and built a professional network that is relevant to what you choose to do with your PhD when you leave Maryland or when you leave this postdoc. And a lot, you'll often hear me talk about your plan A and your plan B, and you'll notice I use the word intended, intended career path. So that means that you will have been really intentional in deciding what these are. The other part of career readiness is knowing how to manage your career. And managing your career is something that you are going to do during your doctoral program or your postdoc, as well as in life beyond Maryland. And what that means is that you know how to conduct an effective job search. And you know how to present the skills that you have and the experiences that you have to employers in a way that make you a competitive candidate. Okay, so that's what career readiness is all about. It's two things, it's two parts. For those of you who've worked with me, you know that if you're not sure where you should begin, there is a survey that you can take that is aligned with this model of career development. And in one of the workshops that's already recorded, the workshop is called Navigating to Your Dream Career, uh, April talks about this model. And so if you are a new student, I would encourage you not to wait until the end of your studies to start interacting and thinking about your own career in professional development. Essentially, the model has four parts. The first is the self-assessment. You know what skills you have to offer to employers. The second part of the model 
is that you've actually done some active, more in-depth research about what different career paths are all about. The third stage of the model has to do with coming up with a plan. And I like to say that you have a plan for each year that you're in your doctoral program or your postdoc and that you create an individual development plan. And then lastly, each year you're taking action. And it might be that you're, that you're finding ways to build certain skills, do professional development, or you're actually act actively create actively engaged in a job search, okay? Don't worry about these competencies. These are the kinds of things that you need to know how to do to manage your career for life. And these things are on that survey that you can take, that self-assessment to see where you might want to begin. I will tell you that most doc students who take the survey find it very helpful. And you can take that survey once a year. Okay, now I want to talk a little bit about, uh, as an international student, it seems like there's sort of four paths that most of the international students and scholars that I work with, there are four options. Some of you plan to seek work in your home country. Others plan on using your optional practical training, your OPT, that you have available to you as part of your uh, F1 student visa. And if you're a STEM student, that's three years. If you're not in a STEM program, you have one year of optional practical training. So some of you plan on using it and then returning home to begin your career or to continue your career. Okay, option C, I've encountered students that planning that plan on using OPT and want to stay in the US for their career. So they will tell me that they really are speak, seeking sponsorship. And I, I know that for many of you this past summer, if you're a returning student or if you're a new student, the changes in um, potential immigration statuses has been very stressful for international students. And I, I want to accomplish, uh, acknowledge that. And I want to encourage you to stay up to date on the information that the IS office is offering. The last thing is that some of you may plan on using OPT or not and going to seek employment internationally. Okay, so I've worked with some students that really want to work in Europe or really want to work in, um, in Canada. Okay. So this session is all about getting you to think about the things that you can do between now and graduation to get you positioned to um, secure whatever type of position you're interested in pursuing. Now, there are a couple of caveats. I'm not gonna get deeply into work authorization or sponsorship or immigration in any depth in this session. Um, and I, I want to tell some of you that you could do everything right and not necessarily land where you thought you would land. For some of you, where you land might actually be better, okay? So I, I'm hoping that you'll realize that you, there's some element of flexibility and being open as you work through career planning. All right, a little bit about frames of reference. Um, and I'd like to talk about these things because as I've worked individually with international students, we all come from different perspectives. So I'm, I'm not gonna ask for your responses, but I want you to think for a moment about the four things that I've got outlined here. So back in your home country, how does that higher ed system work? Who earns a PhD and why, okay? Now here in the US, uh, currently about 3% of the US population has earned a doctorate. And right now in the US, um, well, in the past, you earned a PhD primarily to become a faculty member. But in reality, we know that the data shows that anywhere between 60 to 75% to of our alumni are actually working in careers outside of academia. That may not be sort of how things are presented in your program, but the reality is, is that 
More than half of the PhD alumni from Maryland are working outside of academia. Um, and right now in US academia, there really is an emphasis on diversifying who our faculty members are. So for those of you that have been in the US, you know with the Black Lives Matter movement, many colleges and universities are being asked to look at their faculty and there really will be an emphasis on diversifying the faculty. And there's many, many dimensions of diversification, but I just wanted to point that out. Um, the second dimension is, how do you choose your area of study in your home country and your career path? And I know that for in many cultures, including in the US, there may be expectations about um, the kind of work that you should be pursuing. Um, here in the US, there really is a mindset that individuals are choosing career paths that match their interests, their skills, and their values. And that might be very different culturally than your home country. So when we work together, oftentimes I'm talking even with our international students about careers that fit. What fits your goals? Okay, your home economy and your home labor market. What's, what's happening in it? Um, so here in the US, and I'm sure in your home countries, different regions have different job markets and different types of employers. So Maryland is here in the mid-Atlantic where the federal government is right next door. Um, so there are quite a few defense contractors and there are also lots of government agencies that hire our PhD students. But that doesn't mean that our international students are not able to find employment or OPT. You all have very marketable skills for, uh, related to technology, um, healthcare, education, and um, data, data analysis. So I want to assure you that the US economy um, has a wide range of positions that our PhDs go into. Now, exactly what's happening right now with COVID is another story, and I'll be glad to entertain more questions about that when we get there. Okay, so I've alluded to some of this. Um, the history of the PhD here in the US is it's all about being trained to do research and to generate new knowledge. And until very recently, and even now, many of our faculty mentors um, proceed as if they're training the next generation of faculty. Okay, but regardless of that, the skills that you're you that you're gaining have transferability into this knowledge data driven technological global economy. So while you may feel like your uh, expertise is in a very narrow area, I want to assure you all that PhDs find jobs in a wide range of career paths and that the preparation that you're un undergoing is really a great way to position yourself to be in positions that are gonna be challenging and solving really complex problems. And those problems are being solved in private industry, they're being solved in government, nonprofits, and in the startup sector, okay? Let me continue on here. So what your experience is like is gonna vary a lot. It's going to vary based on your department, your program, and your advisor. And I will tell you that um, in the past, 20 years ago, even 10 years ago, when your advisor may have finished their PhD, it was a very different world. So COVID wasn't on the scene. And so you may find that those around you are um, have spoken and unspoken expectations that you are preparing for an academic career and that you are going to go on for a postdoc. But ultimately, what you choose to do and the path that you are going to be on is your choice. So I find often that advisors are supportive of students entering a range of careers, but they may not know how to help you 
with professional development or job search support if you're not preparing for an academic career. All right, now I wanna talk about what's going on in terms of academia. So over the past two decades here in the US, the number of tenure track jobs has continued to shrink. So back in the 80s and even the 90s, the 1990s, about 75% of all faculty positions were tenure track. Most recently, about 75% are not tenure track. They're professional teaching positions or research positions or adjunct and lecturer positions. And if any of you have been watching the job postings, you're probably noticing that the vast majority of positions that are being posted for this go around of the academic job search have, has been postdoc positions, lecturer positions, and it's because of what COVID-19 has done to the industry of higher ed. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't pursue an academic career, and in fact, we're gonna be doing a workshop um, later this semester about the academic job search, but the reality is, is if you are preparing for an academic career, the expectations about what you've published and your ability to win grant, win grant funding, or at least come in with some grant writing experience is going to be higher than ever. Your preparation to do teaching and to be, address diversity and inclusion in your teaching and research roles is going to be expected, as is being able to handle online teaching. So this COVID pandemic has, is really gonna be a transformational moment in higher education and what the faculty career is gonna look like moving forward. The other thing I wanna point out is that sometimes starting salaries may be lower than what you expect for faculty positions. And unlike in the past, a faculty job is no longer the default that's just gonna work out. Um, it's, it's really going to take proactive preparation and planning on your part so that you can be as competitive as possible. All right, so for those of you who are considering industry jobs, we've got a variety of tools that can help with that. And we do, workshops throughout the year that help you um, figure that out. But one of the tools is called Imagine PhD. And I'm just gonna make you aware of that now. Um, industry jobs is a lot of different things. And I would encourage you if you're saying, I'm open to working in industry, that you begin taking some steps to figure out more specifically what you're looking for. So employers are looking for all kinds of transferable skills. And some of these skills you may or may not develop just by being in your academic program. And a few of them that I like to point out are teamwork and collaboration and communication skills. So I know many of you are preparing to do um, faculty, excuse me, you're preparing to write and present to faculty audiences but developing a broader set of communication skills and teamwork and leadership skills is definitely something that employers look for. Okay, so I'm gonna show you this little cartoon here. As you walk through your PhD program, you're probably gonna find out that there may be some skills, a skills gap between what employers are expecting and the skills that you're developing in your program or that you currently have. And that's where career planning and professional development comes in because you have the opportunity to very intentionally pick experiences to become involved with outside of just your academics that will build some of these skills that employers are looking for. Okay, I'm gonna go over a few tips and some of these are gonna seem pretty obvious, but I wanna remind you. First of all, career development isn't something that should wait. You should start using the available resources right now and take small little steps, weekly or monthly, to become aware of things that are happening that can expose you to different career paths. So don't wait until the end when you're trying to finish your dissertation. 
you'll feel really overwhelmed at that point. Now, if you're at that point right now, don't freak out. Let's start working together. Let's get you involved in some of the workshops and particularly the multi-part workshops that are happening um, in the next, in the fall semester. I already talked about that. Um, this is where you can find everything PhD, career and professional development related. If you haven't even looked at this website before, please take a look at it. This is the place to start. If you are, um, if you are planning to meet with me, I want you to go in and set up your careers for Terps account. That's on the Career Center website. That is how you'll schedule appointments with me. You can access some of the online resources and you can look at job postings and have access to interview stream, which will help you practice for online interviews. If you're an engineer, you would do the same thing with the careers for engineers portal. If you're in public policy, you would go to the career connections website and um, get get acclimated to that portal as well. Okay, my tip number two, if you really haven't done any investigation or research to, to learn more about career paths that you're considering, including the faculty path, and if you don't have a plan B, it's time to start intentionally doing some of that research and gathering information so that you can understand more about what's involved. Um, if you wait until later, until the end, you will have missed out on opportunities to engage with alumni and employers at some of the events that are available throughout the year. So you all got this, you're researchers. The whole goal is to make sure that you understand what you're going to be getting into. And there's really only three ways to research options. You can read, what did we do before Dr. Google, right? You can do a set of intentional career conversations that are called informational interviewing. And you can begin attending some of the events that the Career Center and that the Graduate School does where you can meet employ employers and also PhD alumni. Those are the three ways. And I would encourage you to do more of number two and three so that you can begin expanding your professional network. And I've already mentioned that there are a lot of career online tools. Um, we're going to be getting a new one called Aurora. And I wanted to point out that there are two free webinars that they are doing about preparing for the academic um, careers. And there was information about that in my last newsletter. And I will actually, when we start the q and I'll find the link to this free registration so you can read more about it. I mentioned informational interviews. Uh, some of you, if you've interacted with me, you know that I always talk about informational interviews. These are conversations where you actually reach out to alumni and professionals and, and essentially spend 20 minutes talking with them about their career path. Um, you're really focused on getting advice and the time to start these is absolutely now. You don't want to wait until you are actively job searching to reach out to someone. And I know many of you think that other people will not want to talk with you or share information. That is not true. And I'm going to have some of the veterans who are in this session today share their thoughts about informational interviewing when we get to the Q&A. Okay. If you're, um, there are helpful books here. Um, I want to really recommend The Professor Is In if you're going to go out on the academic job market. Here's my third tip. You definitely want to start participating in professional development activities. And I encourage you to treat your PhD training or your postdoc as a project. And you are the project. So if if you know anything about project management, you know you have to break it down into smaller manageable chunks. And there's lots of ways that you can gain valuable information that's going to help you understand more about career paths and employers. And the first 
way that you can learn is you can learn from other grad students who are further along the path than you are. You can find information out from alumni, so people who graduated from your program. Some of your programs and departments and schools are actually hosting alumni events, as, as is the grad school, and I'm going to talk about that in a moment. But then also, there are all these professional associations that have regional chapters as well, where you can get involved and start meeting people who are doing the work that ultimately you want to do in industry or in government. And don't underestimate the power of being active and visible on LinkedIn, particularly in interest groups where you can tune into the conversation that professionals are having. Okay, um, a way to have a plan is to do an individual development plan. And uh, this is essentially where you set goals for the year and you sort of check in with yourself. Uh, when I send the, the recording, I'll send along the IDP template, and that is also available on the Grad School website. And there's a whole host of other resources that you can check out later as well. Um, if you are, if you don't know anything about the Teaching and Learning Transfer, Transformation Center, you need to look at the university teaching and learning program that they do. Um, if you don't know anything about the National Center for Faculty Development and Diversity, that's another resource for those of you who are thinking about faculty careers. All right, I'm going to move through because I really want to get to the Q&A. Okay. Um, my last tip is that as an international student, you're going to need to master the mechanics of a U.S. job search. And some of those mechanics are going to feel uncomfortable. But I will tell you that as you practice and learn and practice and learn, you're going to get more comfortable with it. And Networking is definitely the number one way that international students and domestic students find um, job postings, job openings, and actually land jobs. So if I could give you one piece of advice, it would be to begin practicing and uh, building out your ability to do informational interviews and do other forms of online networking. Um, the IS career series that this session is part of. Um, on October 9th, we are doing a session explicitly about how do you network. Um, on October 7th, Dan Beaudry, who wrote Power Ties, which is a book for international students with um, job search advice. He's speaking on the 7th, and then on the 9th, we're going to do the session. Um, the sooner you can start practicing and getting more comfortable with networking, the more likely you will increase your opportunity to do OPT and pivot, particularly to careers outside of academia. All righty. Um, these are all the other workshops that are part of this series, and I, I hope that you will also sign up for those. Okay, I mentioned the workshops. This is last year's schedule. I should have, the new schedule is already up on the grad school website. Um, my last tip is about maintaining a positive mindset, and I know many of you are already stressed out. Um, the pandemic's been going on for a while. Um, I would strongly encourage you to make sure that you are doing anything and everything to connect with other human beings and maintain balance and mental health. During this time, the only thing that you really can control is how you use your time, how you take care of yourself, and kind of how you respond to some of the challenges that get presented. And I can tell you, the staff of all of the career centers are here to support you. Don't wait to reach out to us. You don't need to know what you want to do next, and you don't need to feel like you have to figure this out on your own. Um, if you need some support, reach out to the counseling center. I know there, um, there are many, many programs that are happening. And in the grad school, we also have the academic counselor, Simone Warwick Bell, who is running the grad circle. So there are many of us who are here to support you. And my last tip is just about keeping in mind that Maryland is just one chapter in your whole career in life. And I, I want you to think about managing your career as an ongoing process 
um, and that you can really learn from other people. You don't have to do this on your own. And I, I want you to utilize the, the staff to help you practice building the skills. And I want you to make sure that you utilize us so that we can help you make decisions that are aligned with your priorities and goals and that you create options along the way. Okay, so many of you have many questions. Um, I want you to just think for a moment about one thing that you know you're gonna have to do based on the things that I've talked about. Some of you maybe have never gone to that um, go.umd.edu PhD career info, check out the website. Some of you who've worked with me, maybe it's time for you to schedule an, an appointment. Um, so I'm gonna stop there and I wanna make sure that I get to as many questions as possible. So let me go in the chat box. I don't see a lot of questions here yet. Um, if you want, you can unmute yourself and I will stop the recording right now.